Today we are reacting to Ted Lasso and his relationship with the sports team therapist in the show. Welcome back team, I'm Dr. Jackie. I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist. I make videos about mental health topics, psychiatry training, and I provide commentary on how mental illness is portrayed in the media. If that's interesting to you, like and subscribe and join the team. Ted Lasso, welcome wagon has arrived. Please don't barge in here like that. I could have been in a session. Oh, right, of course, I'm, I'm sorry. So this is the first time that Dr. Sharon and Ted Lasso are truly interacting. Prior to this, he was just hearing grumblings of how great she was, and so he wanted to make sure that he met her for himself. As you can see, he did not knock. He just opened the door, and she was taken aback by that a little bit. When you are doing therapy or you're a psychiatrist, sometimes this could definitely happen where you feel like a patient is either barging in on you or not leaving when the session is over. They might also arrive late, and so creating rules around the session and your relationship with the patient is really important from the very beginning. Can I help you with something? Well, yeah, no, I, I just brought you a little something, something for your first day of work. So this is interesting because he wanted to make sure that he presented himself in a certain way. And when you are meeting somebody for the first time, I to understand why he would, one, barge in, right? He felt like it, he was very welcome in her office, but then two, bring her gifts. Sometimes that kind of personal relationship can get blurry and making sure that you are the doctor and the patient realizes that they're a patient and you're providing a service. If you know the show at all, Ted Lasso brings cookies that he makes himself to all his bosses. This is really interesting why he would choose Dr. Sharon because he definitely does not do that for every single person in the show. You can imagine that when somebody is doing therapy or meeting a therapist, that could be a, an extremely intimidating scenario. And so maybe bringing a present or a gift would smoothen out that first interaction for the patient and make them feel less intimidated. No, thank you. Oh, come on now. Let's try a little bite, huh? That's very thoughtful, Coach Lasso. In general, ethically, you don't want to keep accepting gifts from your patients. If they're tiny little baked goods, especially kids, they really want to draw you things. You can definitely accept those, but trips or lavish gifts you typically would not accept from a patient. It's considered unprofessional, as you can imagine why. What's interesting here is that Ted Lasso doesn't really give Dr. Sharon an option of whether she could accept the gift or not. You could see that her immediate response was, no thank you. He did not really take that as an answer, and so she was forced to take the cookie and then actually eat it in front of him. And she was gracious enough to give positive praise and say, that was very thoughtful of you. Not, thanks for the cookies, they're delicious. She made a character comment about how thoughtful him bringing her cookies was. It wasn't anything about the actual cookie. Trust me, it's in everyone's best interest. In a past life, I would inhale a Cadbury's flake, talk nonsense for an hour until I pass out. Self-disclosure when you're a therapist or a provider can be used judiciously. When you say something like Dr. Sharon shared here where she cannot handle her sugar, I have two thoughts here. I'm not really sure if she was basically saying that these are the rules that she applies to herself to please respect that or to kind of communicate to Ted that she will not be accepting cookies in the future and that he does not need to continue bringing her baked goods. The other thing too is appreciating that your therapists are human too. And so that's such a kind of funny, interesting fact about Dr. Sharon that humanizes her. I'm the same way with video games, something in my life that I really enjoy. But then I pretend to prevent myself from having them and somehow making my life better. All I'm doing is depriving myself of something that makes me happy instead of attempting to adjust my relationship to it. What Ted says here in response to Dr. Sharon is interesting, where he explains that completely removing something from your life can result in a lot of distress, whereas you can just provide rules and limits. So this entire scene is kind of about setting rules, setting healthy boundaries, and that is so important when you are both a provider as well as a patient. And being able to navigate that together is going to be a good growing experience for you both. A lot of people go to therapy thinking that it's a one-sided experience. It's very much an adventure and a journey for the therapist involved as well. Hey, what's your favorite book? This is interesting. What is? Am I answered the fountainhead? I know, curveball, right? But I can explain. No, what you're doing here. 
This is obviously your way of connecting with new people. It's very disarming. So you can see that Dr. Sharon is leaning into interpretation and confrontation quite quickly in this interaction. Some patients will be able to tolerate this while others may not. You can see that Ted might lean towards the may not group of patients only because he doesn't realize that he is even putting on a show or performing at all. He is just being himself, introducing himself to the new person on the team and he kind of looks a little heartbroken here. When you are establishing a relationship with a patient, this level of confrontation and interpretation out loud requires a lot of trust from the very beginning. So making sure that you tread lightly here, usually the first few sessions are really obtaining more information and data and getting to know one another rather than calling out something that you've noticed that you find interesting. If it's okay with you, Coach Lasso, I'd like to observe training today, see how everything's functioning. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, you got a backstage pass, full access. Oh, hey, you know what I'm... So she gets out of her chair, she walks to the door, and that's more of a behavioral communication that she wants him to leave. He's able to actually understand and interpret that body language. Some patients will not. They could be either on the spectrum or they are too much in distress. And so you want to make sure that you are packaging the therapy session in a tolerable little box so that they can take it away with them and come back successfully to the next session if that's the plan. This wasn't even a session. This was just the first time that they were meeting and there were a lot of things that you could take away from this. She even gives back the cookie box that he had given to her when they first met. By the time that I'm posting this or you're watching it, I think our team will have reached 1,000 team members and that is such a big deal. I am so grateful and honored that you choose to watch my YouTube channel. It fills my heart with so much joy hearing about all of you that are in different stages of training, all your goals and dreams about giving back to the world. And it's my honor to be able to encourage you and support you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one. I've never met someone that doesn't eat sugar. Only heard about them. And they all live in this godless place called Santa Monica.